Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this tutorial, we will discuss special function modules. For example, this is a PLC and this is a special function module which is analog to digital converter. And the second one is the digital to analog converter and this is input extension module and this is again a analog to digital converter. These are addressed in this way that first one is a sign and address of 0, second one is 1, third one is 2 and so on. How these uh, instruction, how these special function modules work and they store data, we will uh, look into the first detail. You can add expansion modules to increase the number of inputs and outputs available to all the base units of the ML6 series when we it means that the input extension output extension module in addition to this you can also supplement the controllers function by adding so called special function function modules which are we already this discussed analog to digital and digital to analog converter for example for reading analog signals for currents and voltages for controlling temperatures and for communicating with external equipment the digital input output expansion modules do not require special instruction the additional inputs and outputs are handled in exactly the same way as those in the base unit additional input output work in the similar way as the input outputs associated with the plc communication between the base unit means plc and the special function module is performed with two special instructions from and two instructions we communicate with the special function modules using two instructions one is from and other is two these are the special instructions to communicate with the analog to digital and digital to analog converter each special function module has a memory range assigned as a buffer for temporary storage of the data the memory of analog to digital converter or digital to analog converter is called buffer memory such as analog measurement values or received data these are used for the data storage the base unit or the plc can access this buffer memory and both read the stored values from it and write new values to it. PLC can read it and write values to these buffer memories, which the module can then process. The buffer memory can have up to 32767 individual addressable memory cells. Buffer memory has a addressable cell which can have up to 32767 addressable memory cells, each of which can store 16 bits of the data. Each of the buffer memory can store 16 bit data and total buffer memories can store this much individual addressable memory cells. The functions of the buffer memory cells depend on the individual special function module. For example, here, here, here you can see in here you can see in this form to device memory when we want to transfer the, the data from the plc we will use the two command to the buffer memory and we will when we take data from the buffer memory or the special function module or the analog to digital or digital analog converter module we will use the from command buffer memory address 0 buffer memory address 1 buffer memory address 2 and so on these are addressed in this way as i have already discussed it they are addressed in this similar way starting from 0 and goes onward special function module addresses as i have already discussed that the address is starting from the first one with the 0 and goes onward with 1 2 3 4 and so on since you can attach multiple special function module to a single controller each module needs to have a unique identifier so that you can address it to transfer data to and from it each module is automatically assigned a numerical id in the range from 0 to 7 you can connect a maximum of eight special function module you can connect maximum of eight special function module with the plc with the, with the plc and they have the different ranges with the model it changes in this its range changes with the models the number the numbers are assigned consecutively in the order in which the modules are connected to the plc this is plc this is the first module with address 0 second one address 1 and third one address 2 this is in input extension module and in the similar way you can also attach output extension module which is used to in extend the inputs if eight inputs are available from plc it uh, it extend it to 16 if eight inputs are available uh, eight outputs are available from the plc then it will extend it to the 16 outputs if you use output extension module starting address in the buffer memory every single one of the 32767 buffer addresses can be addressed directly in decimal notation in the range from 0 to 32767 0 to 31 we have buffer memories 0 to 31 total 32 buffer memories and total uh, bits that we can store in the memories buffer memories are 32767 when you access 32 bit data you need to know that the memory cell with the low address stores the less significant 16 bit and the cell with the higher address stores the most significant bit in this way most significant bit buffer address higher and less significant bit goes the buffer address n 
means if it is k1 then 16 bit will be stored here if it is k2 the second one will be stored here this is for 32 bit data this means that the starting address for the 32 bit data is always the address containing the less significant 16 bit of the double world the number of data units to be transferred the quantity of data is defined by the number of data units to be transferred when you execute a from a to instruction as a 16 bit instruction this parameter is the number of words to be transferred in the case of 32 bit version d from and d2 if we want to move the 32 bit data when then we will use d before the this command d from and d2 the parameter specify the number of double words mean double word data to be transferred and if we want to move the 32 uh, 16 bit data then we will uh, use the command from and to the value you can enter for the number of data units depends on the plc model you are using and whether you are using the 16 bit or 32 bit version of the from instruction it depends on the model that uh, whether you can use this command for your model or not it depends on your model too 16 bit instruction data units it has the memories from d100 to d104 addresses 5 6 7 8 and 9 and 32 bit data units it has addresses d100 to d104 but here two register will be used d100 and d101 the uh, address 5 and 6 will be allocated for it because it is a 32 bit data d100 and d101 in each one individually can transfer 16 bit data so both the uh, two 16 registers will be added to get 32 bit data in the similar way the next two consecutive will be assigned for the other 32 bit and and in the similar way we goes forward the destination or source in the base unit plc model here are plc model 16 bit instruction from or to 32 bit instruction we when we use 32 bit instruction we use d from and d2 and for 16 bit instruction we use from and two commands valid range for number of data units to be transferred these are the valid ranges you can see that for this is for 16 bit this is for 32 bit in most cases you will read data from register and write it to a special function module or copy data from the modules buffer to data registers in the base unit however you can also use output relays and the current values of the timers and counters as data sources and destination you can also use timers and counters for the bit storage because they can store a bit and counters can store up to 30 two bit values in the next video we will discuss it in 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 detail so tune to me in the next video which will be very much interesting thank you so much